Uh, just as in Java, Java FX scripts, which include uh, classes, functions, other code can be assigned to a package, a Java FX package. When specifying a package, we'll place a package name at the top of our Java FX script file. To use a class function or what have you from a Java FX package, we'll use the import statement to bring in that code, the script code, from other packages. Now, importantly, you do not have to, as you would in Java, you do not have to have the import statement at the top of a script file. It can be anywhere inside the JavaFX script code. Let's take a look at an example. Here we've defined a uh, class team, a JavaFX class called team, along with a JavaScript function called cheer. Cheer, in this case, doesn't have to be part of the team class. It could be its own static function. Uh, so we've got team and cheer defined in the com intertech domain package. Now to use that code from the team fx file in this com intertech domain package in some sort of other file, in this case we'll call it test.fx code, we can see the use of the import statement to import both team and the function cheer. Now allowed to use team and cheer as if they were part of this test.fx code. Uh, notice again the import statement can occur anywhere inside of that script file. It doesn't have to be the very first line in the script file like it would have to occur in a Java file. Along with uh, the package and import mechanism, uh, JavaFX also has a number of access modifiers. Again, access modifiers in JavaFX behave in a very similar fashion to those that we find in Java, so the access modifiers in Java. We have default access modifier, package, protected, and public modifiers. These last three obviously have keywords to signify that type of access, whereas the default access modifier is essentially the absence of a keyword to provide access. These uh, access modifiers work almost identical to the way that Java functions, but there are a couple of additional access modifiers in JavaFX that are certainly new to those of you who do Java development. There's something called public read and public init. The public read access modifier allows the variable or instance variable that's defined to be accessed and read by anybody, even those uh, variables that uh, are not from your package, uh, but without changing them. Now, this is why you'll traditionally see JavaFX classes defined without getter and setter type of functions, or what we call getter and setter methods in Java. That's because in many cases, if you want to protect that kind of data inside your classes or your instances of your classes, you'll use the public read mechanism to prohibit that kind of updating. We also have public init modifiers. allows the objects or variables inside of an object to be initialized or read anywhere but doesn't allow them to be set. Let's take a quick look at the uh, JavaFX Graphical User Interface API, at least a high level. Uh, again, since JavaFX is really important to the development of user interfaces, we want to get a little bit of a glimpse of how user interfaces are developed using JavaFX. And in particular, we want to talk about two profiles, if you will, two sets of APIs, really, that JavaFX offer, something known as the common as well as the desktop profile. We'll also look at the major building blocks of the graphical user interface in JavaFX, that is stage, scene, and nodes. And we'll talk about some of the more advanced capabilities, things like animation that you can do with JavaFX. So the architecture that JavaFX revolves around is really one that is dependent on what type of platform you want to run on. Yes, JavaFX is all about writing WARA code, write once, run anywhere type of code that is for all the screens of your life. However, there are two profiles that JavaFX offers that allow your application to take advantage of more advanced features where there is a platform that supports them. The common profile includes classes and functions that allow our JavaFX applications to operate on both desktop as well as mobile devices. And when I say desktop, I mean fat client as well as browser type of environments. The desktop profile allows your applications, your JavaFX applications, to take advantage of the power and the graphics capability available on our desktop platforms. So if you will, it's a more rich environment and therefore allowing us more richer user interfaces. So when we look at our JavaFX applications, we're really talking about an application that is operating on a desktop system or browser type system, taking advantage of the standard edition Java Virtual Machine and the standard uh, SE Java APIs. 
we'll have our JavaFX runtime environment, and then the two profiles from which we can build our applications, either the JavaFX common and or JavaFX desktop profile. When we're running mobile applications, we're running on top of the Java ME virtual machine using the Java ME APIs, and in that case, we want to keep ourselves restricted to the common profile since some of the heavier duty graphical user interface capabilities are not going to be available on these platforms we're going to use the lowest common denominator profile there the common profile on top of again the Java FX script runtime so if you're building applications that you want to operate across all the screens of your life and don't want to have to rewrite the code then you want to stay to that common profile if you have advanced features and want to take advantage of those advanced features offered by your, your desktop systems, then you can go ahead and use the desktop API. So let's take a look at the, the basic building blocks of a JavaFX graphical user interface. First off, to JavaFX, all the world is a stage. The stage class is a top-level user interface container for all JavaFX scripts. The stage class comes from the JavaFX stage package. This is what we saw earlier when I was running the JavaFX is cool, cool running little window, it was the stage class that we used to actually develop that window. So in its basic form, here's the declaration of a stage instance, if you will, the creating of a stage instance producing the window we see here to the right. Now it's pretty typical that we're going to do a little bit more with our stage. For example, we might give it a title, give it some dimensions, give it a location on the screen. So here's the creation of a stage instance that produces the window with a little bit more exciting features here to the right, giving us at least a welcome to the stage title and giving our stage some dimensions. Inside of a stage we have scenes. A scene essentially represents all the guts of what goes on inside of our stage. In this particular case when we devise a stage instance we're going to want to, in the scene property of a stage, define a scene instance. Now a scene is an object that also has some properties. For example, it can display a fill, uh, it has a height, it has a width, so it does have some properties which we can set. But most importantly inside of a scene, a scene is a collection mechanism for a set of node objects that are actually our displayable items on our window. Things like rectangles, text, uh, any kind of widget we might have is all going to go or play out on the scene on the stage. So if you will, the scene is a container inside of a container. Scene is a container that runs inside of our stage container. 